In this tutorial, I will use Photoshop on the iPad and four images to build an imaginary floating island composition with layer masks, adjustment layers and other non-destructive techniques. You can follow along by downloading the photos and all the links are in the description below. Also, I intentionally left a few mistakes in the composition, so pay close attention while watching and let me know in the comment section which details could do with some refinements or changes to make the artwork look more realistic. You can also share your improved version on your preferred social media with hashtag yes I'm a designer so we will be able to select and feature the most creative designs. This time we will combine four images together to create this cool floating island composition. So to get started, I'm going to select the image, which is going to be our background. And then instead of copy pasting other layers into it, I'm just going to use the place option. So select the image icon from the toolbar and choose camera roll. Select the image with the mountain and the forest. And I'm just going to make it slightly smaller, something around this size and think it's going to work Then press done. And now that we have it placed here in this environment, we can already start working with this. But just to make things easier, I will already bring in the other images that we will need. So I will need the balloon, which we can also make smaller. I'm just using both of my hands. So with gestures, it's easier to quickly make things smaller just by pinching it. And then I press done. That's there. And then one more image we will need. And that is the lighthouse. Once again, it can be smaller, reduce in size, something like that. Now, since we have the quick way of making selections, select subject, I'm going to already use that here on these two images on top. So I will go into select subject, which should do a really good job on selecting this lighthouse. Then I just tap on mask here at the bottom, or we can also use the icon on the right. It doesn't really make any difference. And then I will just put this to the side. And then from the layers, I'll select the balloon. Once again, select subject and mask. All right. But what I will do is to swipe the masks to the right so I can see the image thumbnails. And I will actually hide these two layers. So currently, I will mainly work with the image where we have the mountains and the forest. Now, to create this imaginary floating island, we will invert the landscape and move the mountains underneath the forest. So first of all, we need to make a selection. And once again, I will use select subject, which most likely will select the majority of the mountains. And I think that's already good. Maybe we can just increase it a bit with the object selection tool. I'll just select this section here, maybe a little bit more of that. And we can also use the quick selection tool to just paint over this section. So we can include more details. I think that's good. And we don't need these details here on the right. So I can hold down the touch shortcut and remove these sections. Now we can turn this selection into a mask by clicking on the icon here on the right. But then I will also need to make a duplicate of this layer, which will be used for the forest. And to be able to do that, we need to swipe again, have the image selected, and then go into the additional options, choose duplicate layer. On this new layer, however, I will swipe back to the mask and go into the filters and adjustment options and choose invert. That is going to invert the mask. So if I move this around, you will see it shows everything but the mountains. So that is great. But what we need is to only show the forest. So what I can do very quickly is to use the brush tool, increase the brush size to fairly big, and then just very quickly paint over the sky and these details here on the right. So this way we have the forest on a layer and underneath it, we have the mountains on another layer. What I'm going to do now is to use the transform tool and flip the mountains upside down, then press done. And now we can just start aligning things to each other. So let me just zoom out a bit and then select the forest, move that down. And I think that's a fairly good alignment. We can probably make this a slightly bit smaller. I'm just using again, pinching, resize, 
and align, press done. Now, to make things easier, I'm going to move the forest underneath the cliffs layer. That way I can align it a little bit better. Yes, something like that will work. I want to make sure we can still see this tree here in the foreground. But then now, to make things easier, I'm going to switch to the expanded view of the layers. Now I can select the mask for the forest layer. And using the brush tool, I am going to refine the edges. So first I will paint with black so I can hide the details. Something like that. Just refine the size. Okay, around that detail looks okay. And then here on the right side as well, we just hide a bit more of the forest. That the background. Yeah, that's roughly what I need. I want to create an interesting shape, but then I will switch to the other mask with the mountains and I'll start to remove some details here in the foreground just so we can reveal a bit more of this grass. And then holding down the touch shortcut, I can go back and forth, removing, adding, just to create an interesting edge detail here. Yeah, something like that looks good. Also, I will remove a bit more details here on the left side. And then once again, switch to the other mask, also remove from that, trying to create a realistic edge here on the left side, just trying to define that tree line. Okay, so that looks quite good. We can, I once again, do the same thing here on the right side. I will just remove a bit from both layers. And don't forget that working with masks is completely non-destructive. So we can always come back and make changes if we don't like some details. That's the beauty of working this way and working non-destructively. I quite like the way it looks already, but let's not forget that we need also a mountain in the middle of this island, floating island. And that's actually something that we can reveal from the forest layer by simply painting over it with white. I can find that detail that we can use here in the middle. So this mountain detail will be perfect for us, something like that. And since it comes from the same image, it doesn't even need color correction because it's already matching the same colors. And it's generally a good idea to try to limit the amount of images you use in a composition and also try to match the lighting conditions. So don't try to combine images when some of them were at night, some of them are during the day, or some are in rain, others in sunshine. You will just struggle a bit more to combine them. While here you can see I already have a really good match with both the background and these details, especially because these two layers, the forest and mountains, are originally from the same image. So all I have to do up here is to use the touch shortcut and then very quickly paint over these parts just to get rid of that white detail there. And then maybe with a smaller brush, I can refine the edge a bit more, make it more interesting. I think that looks quite good. On the sides, I can introduce some more details once again, make it a little bit more believable around the edges. And it's really fun to paint mountain details. Uh, you can really be creative with it. I think that's fine. And then maybe on this side here, we can introduce a little bit more of the trees. Once again, building up this terrain. And on the left side, I can remove a bit more of them. Once more, just to create a more interesting edge. Maybe we add a bit more rocks on this side. And let's see from a distance. Yeah, I think that looks quite nice. The only thing I'm a little bit worried about is the left side. Looks a little bit weird here. So I'm just going to add some more tree detail back. And even maybe some more detail here. And just to balance things out a bit better. Uh, yeah, that looks already better. Now we need the lighthouse and the balloon. So let's turn on first the balloon. That one is the easy one. We can just simply move it here on the left side and maybe make it a bit smaller like that. Now we could always move this behind the mountains and the forest, which would be also an interesting composition just to show you. 
we can move it behind it easily. So that could add some additional depth in the composition, but I actually prefer it floating somewhere around here. But then let's bring the lighthouse in the composition. I am going to flip it horizontally with the transform tools because I feel like that lighting works better. Mainly on the clouds in the background, I can see that the light source or the sun is on the right side. Plus also the shadows here on the mountains or these rocks at the bottom are on the left side. So on the lighthouse, we should also try to match that lighting direction. But what we also need to do is to select the mask, use the brush tool and just very quickly paint over these bottom details with black. Now, what you can also do to create a more interesting edge is to switch to a different brush. If you double tap on the brush tools icon, you will be able to choose all these default brushes that come with Photoshop for iPad. And what I think would work quite nicely here is the mixed splatter. So let's select that. I will zoom closer and make my brush size smaller. So when I start painting, you can see how different this looks compared to the previous techniques. And I tried to replicate how leaves would look like. So you get a more varied edge than with a hard edge brush, yeah, something like that. So let's take a look at it from a distance. I think that worked quite nicely. Maybe a little bit more detail here on the left side. Now to make this composition look more realistic and believable, even though it's a floating island that we are talking about, we should try to integrate these layers to each other. Now to make this work, first of all, I'm going to select all of these layers. So I'm holding down the touch shortcut, selected all four additional layers, and I will put them inside a layer group. Once the group is created, we can add an additional layer mask on it. And this is going to be a shared mask between all the layers inside it. Now you can't have multiple layer masks on a single layer, but you can have additional masks by using layer groups. So this way we could have our individual layer mask and this shared mask on the layer group. And you will see why this is useful. Once I zoom a little bit closer here, I can use the same brush that we used before. So this is the mix splatter brush set to black color and probably a bigger brush size, something like that. I can start painting over these bottom details and see how immediately it feels like the clouds are coming in front of these details. I can do a little bit more here on the right side and maybe over here just to create the illusion that this island is really floating in the sky. Now the reason I use the separate group mask or shared mask for this effect is that it can easily be deactivated independently from the mask that we have on the mountains layer. Using this type of techniques of multiple masks affecting layers can really make a huge difference, especially once you get to these more complex compositions. Now let's turn the mask back on and to make things even more realistic, I'm going to include one adjustment layer for the mountains. So I will select that layer at the bottom and go into additional options, add clipped adjustment and choose levels. And what I'm going to use this for is to add more shadow details because the mountains originally were above the landscape, not below. And since now they are below, they will get less sun. So the shadows should be much more darker. And generally all these rocks should be darker than what we can see here on the top. So what I will do is to increase the dark levels and also maybe reduce the output level to something like that. Let's just see how this looks from a distance. Yeah, that definitely looks better. Maybe we can also move this midpoint a little bit to the left side. So this was before and this is after. Definitely more realistic, but I feel like not everything needs to be darker. It's still good to show a few highlights and brighter spots here because they're still above the clouds, so they should get some sun. So what I will do is to have the mask selected, use the brush tool, and maybe this time I'm going to double tap and go back to the original hard brush. And using black with a smaller brush size, we can start painting over some details. 
and that might be a little bit still too big and also maybe a softer brush will work better so that way I can just add some highlights here and there especially details that are closer to the ground level something like that also this side I think especially this edge here can be also brighter because that's where the sun is at even all of these parts here and I think that's already much better and just as a final touch I am going to add some additional cloud details on a separate empty new layer which will be on top of all the other layers so I'm just going to call this one clouds and switch back to the same brush that we used before so it was the mixed splatter and then sample a color from the clouds and then start painting over these details here maybe make the brush a little bit smaller yeah that will work it's a really cool cloud brush or it works really well for drawing or painting clouds there's a one cloud there and then we can maybe have one behind the lighthouse as well I'm really playing with the depth here just to build up more depth and to make the clouds more realistic I will also sample colors from the bottom of the clouds in the background by using the secondary state of the touch shortcut I can switch temporarily to the eyedropper sample a color like these more bluer tones and then I will paint a bit of blue tones here just underneath the cloud and then also the same for this other one here so that just adds a little bit more volume to it makes it more realistic but then of course we can also once again sample a little bit more brighter details just go over it one more time so this is without one of the clouds other cloud and all together if I hide my panels this is what we created by combining four photographs into a creative composition thanks a lot for watching like and share this video if you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we release new videos click on the link on my right and start your membership today to get access to over 200 hours of training courses and personal mentoring by me and my team of creative professionals have fun learning guys and I will see you in the next one.